it's Michelle Visage. Welcome to another episode of What You Packin'. And joining me today from Arkansas, well, LA in Arkansas, it's the one and only Simone. Hey, Simone, yay. Hey, y'all. What y'all know good over there? How are you, baby? I'm doing so good. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. Our first queen from Arkansas. Yep, that's me. So you've been an LA queen for a while. Mm -hmm. Do you still claim Arkansas as your home? Always. Oh. LA is where I am, and I'm happy that I moved here, but Arkansas is who I am. Well, congratulations on the final four. Thank you. What a quest, what a feat, and you've done it. You came out of the box really strong, Simone. I mean, when you rounded the corner in that Polaroid dress, I was like, who is she? <laughs> who is she? And those are pictures of herself. They are, yes. Who is she? You come out like this, you got a lot to hold up. Now, did that scare you? Did you have to deal with any kind of inner saboteur madness? Absolutely, all of it. Yeah. I knew what I brought and I knew that I had to make sure I maintained that on the show outside of just the runway, but doing it on the challenges as well. I didn't want to just be simply a look queen. I definitely went through ups and downs throughout the competition, but then I would go back into myself and be like, hey, you're a fierce competitor and you were brought here for a reason, so chill out and have fun, you know what I mean? You know what to do. Mm -hmm. You're overthinking it. What happens when you get in your own way and when you stop yourself? from manifesting the magic. And then I got a chance to coach you in the Rusical, and I was trying to tell you, you know what to do, mm -hmm. you know what to do. You're overthinking it, get out of your head, yep. get out of your way, and it, it should be so clear if it wasn't before. What happens when you get in your own way and when you stop yourself from manifesting the magic? That was the one thing like at the top of my list of like, you know, getting in my head, and it's always been something that I've had to work on. You can look great and you can have all the talent, but if it's not competing up here, it doesn't really matter. Mm. And it's always been a critique from my friends that that's what I do. It was so nuts to me, especially after coming off such a great week before, to fall into that trap just because I saw other girls do something that I didn't think I could do. Like an old habit, I picked it right on back up. It definitely landed me in the bottom that week, and I should have been because I... I allowed myself to forget. I'm happy it happened hindsight, but in the moment I was like, are you kidding me? Did you learn anything about yourself during this competition? I did. I know I came in not as self-confident um, in my as, like in who I am and what I was capable of. Especially being here in LA, there's so many queens and there's so many people and it's easy to compare yourself. Even easier to do it when you go into a competition like this where it's the best of the best that I've auditioned that year. I learned that I am a lot smarter than I thought I was, more creative, self-reliant than I thought I could be. And I just realized that I was just a stronger person than I gave myself credit for. Just going through every week and realizing more and more about myself that I didn't allow myself to feel before, you can't put a price tag on that. We've talked a few times on the show about you being part of the House of Avalon. Explain to everybody what that is and what that means. Is it like a ballroom house? What is that? Uh, we like to call ourselves a gay street gang. Ah, that's hilarious! <laughs> it is a collective of creative people. We found each other in Arkansas. As much as we loved where we came from, we all knew that we wanted something bigger. Go beyond Arkansas and achieve our dreams. And so I like to think of it as a family of creative people who found each other and help each other with our shared talent. Some of us are more on the tech side, some of us are more creative direction, people who can take photographs, edit videos, like all of us and me. The talent is stunning. Uh, ah, so, ah, <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> all of us click very well together. We work so well together and push each other and, and help each other go through this wild and crazy life. You have so many iconic looks from the runway. I mean, there are so many. I just talked about the Polaroid one. There's the boxing one. But my, if I had to pick a, it's so hard to pick a favorite. You have so many that are so dynamic. Thank you so much. But that Foxy one. Oh, yes. Is like, <laughs> just because it brings like different things to the runway that haven't been done before. Where was your mind when you were putting this together? Were you just like, I know what I'm going to do? Of course, Foxy Lady, this RuPaul album that is our, all of our favorite RuPaul album. And we were like, Foxy Lady, Foxy Lady. 
what if you were a sexy fox? What if you just did that? And at first I was like, what? <laughs> You're kidding, I don't under, I, that no, that doesn't make sense. I don't get that, a furry. And the more I thought of it, I was like, you know what? It's a chance for me to step out of my box. It's something I've never in my drag career done. And if it flops, it flops, but at least I tried. It's a bodysuit inside of that that I had to step into that makes all of the different paddings and whatnot. And so the multiple fittings and the more and more it just came together, I was like, this is gonna be cool. And when it finally, we finally got it, I was like, here we go. I'm glad I did it. I think I said it was the closest thing to perfection I'd seen on that runway. And I'm not lying. We have seen an amazing amount of talent, but that was just, like you said, so out of the box, so different, like, the construction of that garment yeah. was really what blew me away. So whoever did that. Marco Marco, shout out, he did a phenomenal job. And he was so excited to do it. He saw it and he was like, I've been wanting to do something like this forever. And just watching him make the bodysuit underneath and watch him going in and cutting and putting all the foam together. And it was like watching a kid play with building blocks. It was such a beautiful experience. So shout out to so Marco Marco, he turned it. Are you proud of yourself standing here in the final four of RuPaul's Drag Race? I don't even know if proud is the word, Michelle. I had such low confidence about myself, but I said to myself, you're gonna do this, you're gonna make it to the end. Cause there's no questions, there's no comments, there's no concerns. And when I got to that last week, when we were there, all four of us together, and I was like, I am at the top of this season. I have lived my dream and I'm so proud of myself. And now there's only up from here, you know? Simone, you won four challenges. I did. So how you ever doubted yourself is beyond me. I think the key to this is getting out of your own way. Absolutely. Allowing things to organically happen. Mm -hmm. Ignore the voices in your head. They're gonna come and when they come, just let them go. Because when you did, it was magical. I told you, as I saw you coming down the runway, I see these things as fan art all these incredible artists, Glenn Hansen and Chad Sells and all these incredible artists that do our fan art of our queens. Yes. I just see these things already and selling like hotcakes. You kids, this year has been such an incredibly talented year. And it's not just because I'm on it. No. <laughs> our group of girls, especially under, you know, we had the we had the color restrictions. And I think because we had that, it made us all want it more in a way, in a just weird way. You know, it was like, we have this on us, but you know what, we're gonna do it even harder. And I think we truly turned it out. Yes, you did. From looks to personality to challenges, I am just so proud of all of us, every last one of us. I wanna talk about that gorgeous, beautiful Concord grape color gown. This is so the opposite of what I thought Simone would wear to final, but when you explained why, it made complete sense. Who made this one? This one was actually Mother Good. Gigi's mom made this mm -hmm. dress for me. It was amazing. Christopher John Rogers, a fabulous new designer, he plays with all these beautiful colors. And the dress is originally white. And I was like, I don't wanna wear white. I wanna wear something that's really, really stunning and beautiful. And this color I saw on one of his runways and I was like, that's it, that's the one. I was so happy to wear on the runway. And it was another thing on in my mind. I was like, I have to wear that finale gown. If come hell or high water, I have to wear that finale gown. And you wore it, honey, you wore it. <laughs> I did. If you could do it all again, is there anything you would have done differently? I don't think so. I think I did exactly what I was supposed to do. Even the low moments at the rusical and at the roast. Mm. But I don't regret anything because it's all a part of my journey. And the mindset that I have now sitting here, I wouldn't necessarily have, I don't think, if I hadn't went through those things. And what was that double save moment like for you? For me, it was the first lip sync that I had to lip sync and actually like save myself. Right. So I was like, okay, I have to turn it for not only myself, but for Miss Paul and the judges. But then I was like, I'm going against Candy, who I've instantly connected with, but I kind of had to put that out of my head. It's one-on-one -on -one right now. So for the double save to happen, I was more happy for myself. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, but I was so happy Candy got to set. That's fair. So is your mind now 100% on the final? Absolutely, it's full steam ahead, you know? Like I said, I came in and I was like, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna make it to the top. So we had our moment and now it's time to prepare for the finale and to get the crown. How many times did you audition? This is my second time. Okay, so second time and you're in the final four. So obviously there was a reason why it took more than once to get here, but you're here and you are 
amazing and I'm so happy. I mean, you're one I knew in the beginning that would be standing here, to be honest. Oh, wow. But watching you go through it, it was like, no, 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 no. Don't lose steam now. And you, yeah. you fell and you picked yourself back up and that's what this competition is all about. I am so proud of you. I am so happy Thank that you're you so standing much. here with me. I can't wait till I get to hug you in person. I know! Finally get to hug Miss Michelle! Yes! Oh my God. <laughs> I love a hug. I cannot wait. I am so proud of you, darling, and I will see you at the final. Absolutely, I cannot wait. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Simone. Bye, Michelle. Thank Bye. you. Bye, I love you. <laughs> Thank you for watching another episode of Whatcha Packin'. I will see you next time. Subscribe to the Drag Race YouTube channel for all things Drag Race.